Hi, Keisha Fiore here, and I'm so excited to see you today. I'm grateful that I get to be a part of your TPA and teaching journey. I am the founder of the New Teachers Thriving Community on Facebook and the creator of the Cal TPA All You Need to Succeed video program and the Cal TPA Essentials Workshops. I'm excited to get to share with you some of the tips that I've learned from helping hundreds of teachers pass their Cal TPA. Today, I want to talk to you about high order thinking. I've been working a lot with uh, clients and teachers recently who are struggling to understand what does it mean to have students think at high levels. High order thinking is what I like to say is when the steam is coming out of the kids' ears and not out of yours, when they're the cogs and the wheels are turning and making meaning and understanding. It is when they are cognitively challenged to understand the content that you're teaching. So when we think about students thinking at high levels, those are the skills that are above following along, identifying, choral, responding, um, all those things that just happen when you are facilitating and leading the discussion. When the teacher is the director and the teacher is um, the direct instructor, students are generally not thinking at very high levels. When teacher is facilitator and teacher is asking open-ended questions, then the students are asked to engage and to think and to share at high levels. So I want to share with you today a resource that I have for looking at that. So let me share my screen and select this one. When you are asking students to do high order thinking, we are asking, I like to look at blooms. That's the one that I'm most comfortable with. There's multiple types of hierarchies, but they all basically tell us the same thing, that there are lower levels of thinking and higher levels of thinking. Our lower levels of thinking are remembering things, listing things, ordering things, defining words, using our flashcards, giving responses that are directly in the text, answering right there questions, right? And as we scroll up to higher levels, higher and higher levels of understanding, we see that once we get past the understand and start looking at how are they applying their learning, now we're really getting beyond the instruction and into the student's application and understanding. They're being able to analyze. So now we start think, seeing questions of why? Why does that work? How, how would you change something? You're finding the difference between construct concrete and abstract ideas, right? We're coming up with the determining the differences and similarities between things. And then we continue even higher to synthesizing. This is where students are having to take pieces of information and put them together and make additional understanding, right? How can you paraphrase this? What makes this similar to or different from? And moving to evaluating and creating, right? How would you improve something? Which approach is stronger? What, why did you solve it this way? Show me the model, explain your understanding, design something, okay? creating something into a new and different form. I like this one, create a short story about the concept or how can this information be told in another form of a story or poem. Things that are asking kids to grapple with and the understanding of how to do something. So when we're talking about high order thinking, this isn't the step after you've done some direct instruction, right? When you send them back to their desk, and they are engaging with and finding the information. But it's not just enough to use high order thinking verbs, right? You have to understand the level at which they are being asked to think. 
This is one of my favorite uh, images. I just Googled Bloom's taxonomy and I think I just really like it because it's a light bulb shape and you kind of think about the bright brighter lights here um, as they are thinking and their lights are turning on brighter and brighter. And we can see what kind of verbs are at these levels. But sometimes we might find a verb that is a knowledge level and a higher synthesis level verb. And you have to really think about how is it being used. But you really, in order to get the kids thinking at high levels, need to understand how to take apart your standards. They call it unpacking your standard. So that when you look at the standard, you don't just see compare and contrast. And so you do a compare and contrast. But you also focus on what? The nouns that are being, the nouns and noun phrases that are being compared, right? Um, I was working with teachers and I'm noticing that our lesson plans are not aligned to the grade level standard because we're not looking at and unpacking the standard to get to the grade level standard. So one that sticks out in my mind in particular is looking at uh, reading, compare, and contrast from second grade and fifth grade. In fifth grade, they want them to compare and contrast topics and ideas from the text. In second grade, they're actually comparing and contrasting the texts. It's a really big difference of what is being asked for the students to do. And when you are looking at your standards, you need to understand what is it that this standard really wants me to do so that I'm teaching the students at grade level and not lowering the standard and teaching them at a lower grade level on accident, right? Not purposefully trying to teach second grade instead of fifth grade, but because you haven't unpacked the standard and looked at what are the different essential elements that are being asked for the students to do, it's easy to miss the boat. And then we're not really thinking high levels because we're not teaching them at grade level. So when you are teaching students high order thinking skills, first, know the standard well, inside out and backward, that you think you want to teach. And then think about what is the depth of knowledge that these students need to have to do this standard. And if it's recall, if it's state, if it's select, if it's identified, if it's labeled, if it's repeat, right? Those are not high order thinking skills. So that's probably not the right standard for you. If it asks them to describe, justify, defend, um, let's see, categorize, compare and contrast, um, illustrate, model, et cetera, now we're getting into the standards that you want to be doing for your Cal TPA. So it is my pleasure to help you in any way that I can. And I hope that understanding high order thinking will allow you to pick the strategies and standards that help you help guide your lesson so that you can write about how you've engaged all students in high order thinking. If our grade level standard is fifth grade and our students are functioning at third grade, we need to give accommodation supports and scaffolds that allow these students to participate with the grade level standard. Never lower the expectation that we'll get you a two or a one for sure. We always want them to be reading and engaged with and participating in the academic vocabulary and text that the grade level is participating with. And how do you get the students who are down here to participate here. And those are the accommodation supports, scaffolds, ELD, um, and UDL that you are supposed to explain for your focused students or for your assessments and lesson plans in cycle one and cycle two. If you've got questions, please reach out. It's my pleasure to answer them and help you in any way that I can. If you'd like more support or you're feeling like you're floundering or you just don't have a clue what to do in order to be successful on the Cal TPA. I have the Cal TPA All You Need to Succeed video program. 
This program is literally a step-by-step -step guide, question by question with my tips and tricks and wait for it, examples of highly scored um, uh, projects and clients who have shared their information with me. So you can, I will, it's a walkthrough, mini short video clips for each template to tell you what to write, how to write, and how to use the rubrics to be successful on your Cal TPA. If you're not sure how to plan your lesson, what standards to choose, how to write your annotations, or you want to just make sure that you've got a clear vision of what to submit, the Cal TPA Essentials Workshops are just for you. These small group intimate workshops are led online live and help you to ask the questions and get the support you need to confidently submit and pass your Cal TPA. For information on both of these programs, look in the links below or reach out to me on Facebook at Keisha Fiore. My name is right here, A-E-C-I-A-F-I-O-R-I. Keisha Fiore on Facebook, send me a direct message and I'd be happy to get you any information you have or answer any questions you have. I look forward to being a part of your journey and thank you for listening and reaching out to find out how that you can best support your students in thinking at high levels. Have a great day.